we have plans right now that the governor has to will probably have to consider before the end of the year to put 20,000 fracking wells in the Delaware River Basin. That's a drinking water for 15 million people. Do you want to risk the drinking water of 15 million people to allow the oil and gas industry to profit off extracting gas in the Delaware River Basin? Is that what you want to do? How far down are those wells? They've drilled wells upwards of a mile to two miles in many instances. And the aquifers are not even close enough. So that shows that your lack of understanding of the process, right? Because the I, process I've, itself... I've read and, up on the process. Well, then, but the degree of where these explosions happen really doesn't matter. It has no relevance to the depth of the aquifer. Because what happens is all the flowback fluid winds up coming back up the well, regardless of the depth of the aquifer and the depth of the, of the shale deposits. Yeah, so they, so it in, doesn't they're matter in case, because they're encased, though. They're encased. Yeah, so the industry's yeah. own admission, the industry's own documents and admission is that 5% of well casings fail immediately upon drilling. And over a 30-year period, half of them fail. Do you know how long these well casings have to last to protect drinking water? Do you know how long? Forever. Because they will continue to remain with toxic chemicals in the earth that yeah. will be under pressure so and will come up. And so when those fail, when those fail, and, the, and they come up, they will continue to remain under pressure. Then you do not fundamentally understand the process of fracking. If you think that the things that are but underground the, the, are not coming back up through you're, the wells, you're, you're talking about when the, when the fracking actually takes place. I'm, there's flowback that comes back up, but when they actually um, take the waste. It's buried in wells way underground. No, they've actually brought the waste to two landfills in New Jersey. They've brought the waste to uh, an oil treatment facility in Elizabeth. It is not have you kept been to underground. The oil treatment facility? I actually have been there. Yes, I have visited. It discharges into the into joint meeting, which then discharges into Newark Bay. After what's been done to it. Nobody's really sure what they did to it. They actually initially denied actually even accepting the waste when first asked about it. But you don't know. No, and the process is the process is you're, spe you're speculating. What do you mean? I'm speculating. You're the waste speculating was brought to that facility. Did. Well, the reality but you don't, is, is you don't know. So this is very happened. interesting you're because me so there's no rules. There's no rules and standards for how this waste has to be treated. This waste is exempt from the. Uh, Resource Conservation Recovery Act. The Resource Conservation Recovery Act is, gives the EPA the authority to regulate hazardous waste from cradle to grave. This waste is not considered hazardous under the Resource Conservation Recovery Act. There are no standards for treatment of this waste. There are no standards for treatment of this waste. It is exempt from this. If this process is so safe, if it is so safe and so good for us, why does this industry need to be exempt from the Resource Conservation Recovery Act? Why does this industry need to be exempt from the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act? If it, what they're doing is so safe, these basic standards for public health and the environment, they're allowed to violate. If it's so safe, why should they be allowed to, to, to get out from underneath those important regulations? Well, look, I mean, that's not something that we focus on every day. We're not, we don't focus on environmental issues. We're, this isn't an environmental issue. This is a human rights issue. This is a public health issue. This is a this is a this is a, an issue for all of us. This goes. This is an economic issue. All of these things related. It's an economic. And so, so how do you? Let me ask you this. So, you want to you want to ban fracking and the use of natural resources that we have here at home? What is the alternative? We need to, we need to move towards sustainable renewable energy, such in a as very aggressive way. At, in at a what very cost? aggressive that way. At what cost? Though, and I, raises rates. On I think we need. To, I think that we need to have an aggressive move towards solar and renewable energy. I actually think that, that you guys, in the dialogue that, that you're driving around austerity, crazy. is doing more damage Sorry. to the country than anything else. You're talking about doing absolutely it's nothing except I'm cutting I'm taxes and, and cutting government spending is not going to help us move. We can use resources collectively to promote <laughs> renewable energy that's going to ensure us moving towards sustainable energy future. We provide billions of dollars in subsidies to the oil and gas industry every year. And if you Every year, us, we, you didn't say one thing in that hearing did. about it. We did too. We did, we did say that we, we are, as an organization, we have been and will continue to be against all subsidies, no matter what that subsidy is going to. And we said that in the testimony, and I'm happy to go find there, it in the testimony and give it a, to you to show. There is a role for government in, in helping us move towards a renewable energy future. No, and they, and no. that, that, absolutely. that role that, that is role, absolutely That role there. is it's, it's, that it's called taxing. Free, it's called yeah. free market. That's what should be The free market will allow You can't say that right now, wind and solar are just not viable resources right now. 
They're just not. It's not cost effective right now. The technology isn't there. And all and all we are saying is, if it was a viable resource, then we shouldn't be subsidizing it enough to the point that we are right now. And Clearly, you don't understand markets and how they function and how they work, or you wouldn't expect that all of a sudden a magic hand is going to pull a sustainable energy thing out of the table. Oil and gas and coal markets and are people coal making choices, are actually, not, not pinhead bureaucrats. are actually <laughs> creating a dynamic so. where the choices for, for New Jersey consumers are limited. New Jersey consumers don't have a broad choice of where they're going to get their energy from. And as you aptly said, the price on solar and wind right now is, is more expensive than these other energy sources like gas. Now, what's happening right now in New Jersey and where the free market is leading us, right, is the creation of more gas infrastructure to support low cost get natural gas, right, in which consumers are making those choices. Now, as we start increasing the use of natural gas and we start exporting natural gas to foreign countries, we're going to see gas prices rise. And when those gas prices rise, consumers are going to be locked into an energy source that, that, that is now has prices going up. And prices have to rise on natural gas development for the market to continue working. Right now, gas and oil com companies are only recovering about 25% of their cost of gas drilling and through fracking um, through the, the sale of gas. They need to get this gas into, mass, into international markets and they need the price to go up. So at that point in time, when gas prices rise, we're going to be locked in and the solar and wind economy is going to be destroyed. And so we need to actually work within the market to create an opportunity for gas or for wind and solar to actually be you're, viable. You're, you're, you're making a case for an environment where they wouldn't be destroyed. If, if gas starts to go up, people will look for other alternatives. They will make choices about things that they can afford to make sense for them. You want and to make the choices time, for them. I think you should be pro-choice in, in the energy sector. It'd be, it'd be nice. Allow people to make their own decisions. People don't have the choices right now. The, the cost of, of <laughs> transition to, to wind and solar could be made far easier for consumers. But what transition and does there have to be? Get rid of the, all the interference in the energy sector. Get rid of all the subsidies. Get, all, get rid of all that stuff. And let's compete and let's see who wins and, and, and who it's wins as as and that. who wins is an industry that's polluting our air that's polluting, polluting our, our water and 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 literally polluting, destroying polluting our, our air drinking air. water what's polluting the air fracking wells there's no, no, there's no, no, tremendous I'm, studies about the impacts of fracking and, and air quality in communities where drilling is happening there, there are no credible studies are you kidding me that, uh, there, there, there are stars the Dish Texas did a study specifically monitoring air quality in their community after drilling started in their community. They found benzene in the air from drilling operations there. You know, you'll find worse things under your household. Worse computers. things than benzene? You'll find worse. Th <laughs> you'll find bad chemicals in things that are underneath your sinks. Do you dry clean so your you clothes? Believe, so you believe? Wait, 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 wait. You believe? Do you dry clean your you clothes? You believe that we should be putting benzene through fracking no, into not, people's that, communities, that's and not, that's, that's not okay, my, that's not and that's what worse saying. than what people find in their backyard? Because that's, that's what, what you said. No, no, no. You said you'll find saying. worse things. You're putting words in. I want, I'm interested okay. in the answer to his question, Jim. The, my point is simple. Some of the chemicals that you that you find in the fracking solution, there are similar chemicals, same chemicals that are used in fracking products that are in household products. You find some in dry cleaning that, that's used for dry cleaning. There are, are there's a certain level of tolerance that you have for things that, that hurt you. There's stuff in toothpaste that can hurt you. We're these are things. These are things that people deal we're with every right day. Now that that so at fracking well sites, we need to have a little bit of the, common sense the gas, applied instead of the hysteria. The gas that that's coming the out. Environmental movement puts out. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, you know, not a not a radical organization. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, they found that radon levels at fracking wells, at at the source of drill wells, is ten times higher than background levels, and that gas being brought through pipelines to kitchens and, and tailpipes that people are building natural gas cars and to power plants that we're building in New Jersey. And we're bringing a radon burden to our communities now. This is, this is the leading cause of, of lung cancer after smoking and the leading cause of can lung cancer amongst non-smokers. We are already at at background level, at the maximum acceptable level of, back, uh, of radon in, in New Jersey for most of the state. Bringing more radon into our communities is something that you think we should be doing? <laughs> that's, that's quite a way to think. 
Do you think we should be doing that? Do you I, think we should be bringing all, more radon I, into I, our communities? I have no idea what reports you're talking about. The U.S. About. Geological Survey okay. is done, is, did, did research on this. Well, I'm not familiar with the report. And the research I've done on fracking has shown it's been safe. What research okay. has shown it's safe? Look, I've, <laughs> you, you, take, I, you take a look at the EPA and what they've put out, and they've said there's been no credible evidence that they're is harm to the environment. What about the report so, on the drilling wells in Pavilion, Ohio, or Pavilion Wyoming that said that I'm fracking not, contaminants have been found in, okay. in aquifers I'm not, there? I'm not familiar with every report that you're going to throw. You just said EPA studies. Okay. Like, there's an EPA study for you that's documented contaminants from fracking in an aquifer in Pavilion Wyoming. <laughs> like I said, you know, their, their EPA has put out that there's no harm. There's been study after study. They've just completed studies in other states like Pennsylvania, they haven't shown anything. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. It's, just, it's just more fear-mongering and it's gear tactics that's coming out from your side. The EPA Sorry. didn't say there's no harm, though, right? They said that there's contaminants associated with fracking in an aquifer associated with fracking. in Pavilion, Wyoming. How did they get Wyoming? there? What do you mean? How did they get you're, there? You're not, you're not making your case. You're not proving that where any of this came from. Go read the EPA report. It's very conclusive. Like, look at that report when you get back to is your Is it office. as conclusive as what was just put out, that humans are the main cause for global warming as well? 